Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. He is Nick Martin. How are you, Nick? I'm good, man. How's it going? Ah, fantastic. I- I'm wearing the same hoodie I wore yesterday, but it's cold. So I'm rocking the Vans just so they sponsor us. Oh, well, <laughs> well good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I-, I wish us luck, Vans. You hear us? Uh, today yeah. on DadCast, very special guest, an amazing father. He is an Emmy Award winner. He has most recently appeared in The Walking Dead. He is Mr. Jacob Young. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. That's a nice, uh, very nice intro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to start listing off all the nominees of uh, the Emmys, but I figured that would have just taken up the entire episode. So we yeah, just, we just kept it simple. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> so as a rite of passage, Jacob, of course, the very, very first question we always ask is, are you a dad? I sure am. I'm, I'm a father of three, as yeah. a matter of fact. Uh, boys, girls, ages, names, careers, all that stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, well, my son is just about ready to turn 13. He's, gonna, he's getting into the to teenage years. And there's definitely been some interesting growing pains that are going on with that right now. And then uh, I have two daughters. Uh, one is seven and one is five. Wow. Okay. Uh, and so- they're all now they're all officially in some sort of school. Right. So after all of these years, my wife and I, after 13 years or 12 and well, whatever, uh, are now have the house alone during the day, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, I know, I know the feeling it's, it's my, my beautiful studio is quiet right now, but <laughs> you know, it is going to be uh, raucous here in about an hour. Today's an early day for my kids. So they get home just after about, we're planning to end this thing. Maybe if we go over, uh, they'll make an appearance. We shall see. Um, I, I'd like you to touch on some of those growing pains with your 13 year old boy. Cause personally I have a, uh, almost 17 year old daughter and we could spend weeks discussing all the issues <laughs> there. Um, my son is 11 turned 11 in August. He is starting to show signs of rebellion and, Ooh. and complaints. And, you know, he sees how the older sister has acted and now he's, it's just, you know, it's going to happen. Puberty is, is literally knocking on that door for him. I know it is. And yeah. and crazy things are going to happen. So in the, a crazy turn of events, I'm going to ask the advice of you um, after hearing some of these stories of how you're handling that, because I'm almost there when it comes to him. Well, you know, it, it, thank you, you know, for asking that question. It, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, a, you know, it's always a, you sort of feel the situations out to begin with. There's been, there's been several different things, you know, our kids are growing up in a different time. We grew up in a different time and, you know, there's, they have resources that we didn't have. They see things that we didn't have at their age, uh, you know, they, that with their age now. And, you know, there's questions that are popping up all the time that I I'm answering, but, um, but typical things that happened to me when I was in school and happens to pretty much every kid that's going in, into middle school, which are those really tough years. Those are the years they're really sort of finding themselves. My son came home the other day and he said that uh, this kid in class had been, had been picking on him and kicking his chair and, and whatnot. And he told him to stop. And the kid is a boxer. He like trains as a boxer and he would, you know, he waited for him after class and he's like, Hey man, do you fight? And I guess my son didn't want to say he didn't fight because we try not to teach to raise hands in our family, right? you know, unless we had to defend ourselves. And he, he said, you know, I don't want to be expelled. I mean, I'm not into that. And, and the kid went ahead and slugged him right in the square in the chest. He's got a, He still has a bruise mm. in on his sternum from it. It was just last week. And he was pretty shooken by it because we recently moved from Utah down to South Carolina and it's a new school for him on top of all these other changes that he's going through. So my wife, his mom said, you know, do you want me to call the school? And he was adamant. He was like, yeah, I think we need to address this because he was a little scared. And, and so needless to say, there's been some ramifications that have happened. Now the kid, I don't know if he's expelled or whatnot, but, but at least, you know, he's, he's feeling a little more, he's feeling better about it and feeling safe. Um, It's, you know, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, I grew up in Oregon. I know you guys are from Oregon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up there. I grew up in Tillamook, Oregon, a bunch of farmers and and loggers. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, kids can be tough on each other. 
and so he's he's been going through that. And there's there's been a a, a gamut of other things that we we've dealt with, but he's a good boy. He really is. I mean, he has a really supportive mother and father, who, and of course us. And 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 we just we've tried to implement things that maybe our parents didn't do when we were kids. Yeah, that's so. You know, if things go like they should, um, at least when we were growing up and our fathers, fathers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, a boxer, bully kid, and your son in the next few years are probably going to end up best friends anyway. Well, this is exactly what I told him. I said, <laughs> there's probably three reasons why this kid is doing it. One, he wants to be your friend and doesn't know how to express it. Right. Two, there's probably something going on in his house that we don't know about. It's out of your control. Um, and, and three, maybe, you know, he heard some girl was crushing on you and that pissed him off. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's all, yeah. those are three main reasons. And those, those haven't changed. I mean, even when we were kids growing up, you're absolutely nail on head. That is correct. I, man, my first bout of bullyism with my son was about three years ago. So eight years old, uh, he's getting off, man, it is loud where I'm at. I apologize for that. They like to practice driving the buses right around here for school. And oh yeah, I can't. I can't hear it. Actually, can't hear I can't it? hear anything. You're, well, it's, I it's certainly good. can. You're, yeah. you know, you, you're, you're Mike. I do the same thing because you know my mic will pick up some things. I go, what, what's, what is going on? Somebody. Yeah, I had to go. Hand? You know, of course, had to buy the sure, the sure. So they pick up everything and beautifully. He gets off the bus when I was picking him up, and he just his shoulders are slumped, head was down. You know, just. It was like a Hollywood scene of how you want to script. S son walking off bus, sad and dejected, go. And it was it was a perfect thing. And I walk up and I said, what, what's, what's going on with you, kid? You know, this this is new. What Everything okay? And all the sixth graders were making fun of my name on the bus. And for a while there, he had a problem with his name that we gave him. His name is Sawyer, which I think is just kick-ass and awesome. You know, awesome. it's a great name, yeah. but, you know, it was different from what everyone's used to. He wasn't a Brad. He wasn't a Jeff and John or a Joe. So that was what they they centered on to make fun of him with. And, you know, it was a rough couple of days that entire year. It, you know, we had to teach stand up for yourself. Um, I have absolutely no problem at all as a father if you get in a fight, but you are not starting it. You have absolutely, right. if you could finish it, I am, you're never, ever going to be in trouble with that. But never, ever throw that first punch. And, you know, defend yourself if you have to finish it, et cetera. But yeah, that, it sucks as being, being a dad and f seeing your son in pain and, and feeling that way. And then we have our daughters. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a little bit more sensitive when it comes to my baby girl. You know, it's our son, you yeah. know, and we hope to think they're a little bit tougher than each other. But how about regards to you, Jacob, your, your daughters? Well, are, you know, like, I haven't hit I haven't hit the teenage stride yet with right. them. And I know that'll be, you know, coming abounding when that happens. <laughs> be warned. Uh, be careful. It's yes. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a journey. <laughs> But um, but I have to say, you know, as of right now, you know, they they fight like sisters, but they're 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 polar opposites. Uh, my my Molly, who she you know, she's you know, so it's Molly. Grace is my youngest Molly and Luke. Yeah, I know you asked for names is my son. Uh, Molly, she's in you know, she's in the, the third grade and she is just super smart. And but not only smart, book smart, but also smart, like knows how to. Street smart. Yeah. yeah. Street smart. Knows how to get a, oh, no, but knows how to like, you know, manipulate parents and things uh, like that. Uh, like, Oh no, it wasn't me. I didn't do that. So, so the, you know, she's always, she's always in that, that, uh, that slot. But, but as far as grace, you know, she's just sort of our, our, um, adventurous free soul. And, you know, I don't know if, you know, school is ever going to be her thing or, or what, but she's just sort of carefree. She's like, she's really cool. Definitely has those artist tendis, tendencies. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so it's pretty cool, man. And they're all, they're all so different. She's the third grader. Yeah. Third. Yeah. My, yeah. my baby girl is eight and in third grade as well. So you and I have a, <laughs> a common link when it comes to that one. And she's kind of the same way. Very, very, it wasn't me. It was my brother. He's like, oh, really? She's like, yeah, go look at the cameras. It's, oh. 
<laughs> we told her the cameras were filming oh, once I, I years ago. So tell us the truth. And now every time turn on the cameras and now we're stuck because they weren't on. They're never on. They're only on when we leave. And it's oh, <laughs> backfired. Very, very smart. I, I use that camera trick all the time, but I don't even have cameras. <laughs> 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 they think they're hiding. Well, it was that one year, and, and and I know they watch my podcast. So, so Avery, when, when you stumble across this episode, first of all, this is Jacob Young, Emmy Award winning television actor on one of Daddy's favorite show as well, The Walking Dead. So it's kind of a big deal. Avery knew about the cameras when we caught the Elf on the Shelf a couple Christmases ago, getting all crazy <laughs> on Christmas time. So now it's how she she learned about the cameras and they were real because those mischievous elves were doing some crazy stuff on the cameras one night and it was great video. I should put that in here yeah. right now. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> Nick. Sorry, yeah, man. So I, 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 gotta, I, I just I, you know I know you just just I, yeah, I, just I do my yakking, thing. I'm yakking, sorry. Yakking. I'm gonna step back for a moment. <laughs> Go ahead. So yeah, so going back to your 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 son, my I have a 14 year old son that's kind of going through the same stuff with at school, getting bullied and he was, was like super popular in junior high. It's his first year of high school. He broke his knee at the beginning of summer. All of his friends bailed on him. And now it's like, dad, I don't, I don't know how to overcome this. I don't know how to make new friends. I don't, he's going from a junior high with maybe a couple hundred kids to a high school with over a thousand kids and having the older kids. And, you know, he's six foot three, six foot four, huge kid. I'm like, I don't know how he got so tall. Yeah, I know. I'm like five seven. Nick's like five two. <laughs> but, for the record. So yeah, so they make fun of him for being super tall. He can't play sports because his legs all messed up, and he's just like super bummed. And so it's it's really rough, like not being able to fix your kids, not being able to be like, dude, just <coughs> get that confidence. And you know, that's I don't I don't, I don't know how to explain it to him. Like I kind of I kind of went through the same thing when I from junior high to high school. I was just a total dork and. Halfway through my freshman year of high school, I was like one of the most popular kids in high school. I'm like, it'll work out, bro. It'll work out. But <laughs> it, it I, finds yeah. its way. But you know, it's it, heartbreaking it, though, just watching him come home, just like so bummed, and you're like, oh man. Well, I I can completely relate to that. My son, when he came home, he was said one of the days because he had made some friends, a couple little couple friends, and and he had been gaming with them online, and you know, of course, that's like the new social life for these yeah. guys, gaming, and there was, there was some of that sort of stuff happening. He was being picked on. And my son asked him, he's like, you know, you know, what do you do? You know, when somebody does that and he goes, I just, you know, I just keep my head down and, you know, just, you know, ignore it. Which, you know, was, that was sort of a big red flag for me too. Cause I don't know this kid actually. I mean, I haven't even met him, but, um, but I, I was like, that's not necessarily the way to deal with things Just putting your head down and, you know, Walking, you know, I mean, walking away is one thing, but putting your head down and 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 just trying to, you know, not exist is another. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you know, we we've, we've really been working on that, and it's it, you know, he's he's coming around, but you know, sorry to hear that, man, and it's tough, man. I I I'm telling you, I dealt with it myself from uh, I I I moved around a lot. We you know we were in Tillamook, Oregon for a long time. But my parents were divorced. I kind of went back from Washington State to Oregon. Um, and Washington State was fine. All those kids were great because I, I knew all those kids. And I knew all those kids in Oregon, too. But they were they were just a little tougher. They were a little bit more rough around the neck. And, you know, they, they just they wouldn't ease up. And sometimes there was those moments where it was like, you know, am I going to am I going to have to get in a fight? And there was times where I've had to protect myself and and bullying th the the idea of uh schools and teachers being aware of bullying at that time was just not existent it was i i remember one time i was in uh i was in physical education i was in pe and i was a freshman and i was a athlete uh, i was a uh, uh i was a state champion wrestler i was an alternate on the USA team, freestyle Greco-Roman. So when I ran, you know, I loved to run and I was fast. So they said, oh shit, you can't run with the freshmen and the sophomores any longer. You have to run with the seniors and juniors. And some of the seniors and juniors who were varsity football players were in that PE class. And I would still, 
I'll run them. And I don't know if that was the reason, but I, but I eventually was a week later, two weeks later, a water balloon would be thrown at me every single day, <laughs> every day I was changing. And just as I was getting ready for fourth period, I was soaking wet. So finally, about the fifth time this happened, I got, you know, I got a little mad and I said, who did this? And there was, there was a, a guy, I'm not going to say his name, but he, he came around the corner and he was on my wrestling team. He was also on the football team. And he said, I did. And he grabbed me and he threw me to the ground and he, he busted my head open on the concrete. I started bleeding. Of course, I was in complete shock because I thought this guy was my friend. And I went outside and the varsity football coach came out and he said, what, you know, what, what happened? He was also our PE teacher. I told him, he told me to go to the office. Nothing happened to this kid. There was, there was nothing. He started, it was, I think it was homecoming the next weekend. He never got in trouble about it, but I do have to say many years later, after, you know, I'm going to Hollywood part. working okay. in TV and film, I come back home. I come back home to Tillamook all the time. And my sisters are still there. And, and my brother-in-laws and all my nieces and nephews. And I ran into him at the, the local little supermarket. And he came up to me and he said, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry about that time. And, you know, is that gratification? Is that something that I was, I was happy and pleasant that he said that to me, but I wasn't, you know, does it take away that, that feeling? No, but you know, everybody learns their, their lesson, I guess. And we all have to sort of weigh out, you know, weigh those things out in our lives and say, was it worth it that I did that? Um, I know he, he must've had some struggles in his family too. And that's something that I, I've been evaluating with my son is, well, you know what, don't engage if you don't have to. And you know, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. Right. Yeah. I try to teach my kids to talk it out if they can, you know, if, if they can get a conversation going, be kind. And, and like you said, there's something else going on. Some, there's something at home, something in their personal life. Talk to them, be their friend. You know, try not to be an asshole. Don't don't mouth off. Just and it's it's worked a little bit, but there's kids are just like with COVID and stuff. They haven't had the interaction for a year and a half, so it's. I think it's really messed up the dynamic of just actually talking to somebody, and getting kids to understand that it's okay to use your words and <laughs> not be isolated. So now it, it's so true that that, that last year was we taught both of our kids, all you know, the two of the kids that were in school remotely. And they really, my daughter was fine, but my son, you know, getting back in the program was, it was different. And right after like the first two weeks, he was like, you know, I don't want to do this. I want to be homeschooled. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. Your mom is not a teacher, first of all. And you need to be socializing again. You need to get back out there, back in that program and meeting kids and and hanging out and having fun and meet, meeting a girl. He did he did reach out to a girl that he liked. And I do have to admit him for this. He actually asked a girl out. This is the first time he's ever really done that, that to my knowledge. And she said no. Oh. But but I but oh I, I said, dude, I said, kudos. Yeah. You took the opportunity to get out there and put yourself out there. And she's going to remember that because you're just starting to blossom. Just wait. She's going to, she's going to wish that she yeah. was, uh, Regret she was gonna will settle in. Yeah. <laughs> Does, uh, is Luke named after, uh, any particular, uh, amazingly awesome sci-fi movies from back in the day, or is that just a random thing or a musician? Well, no, you know, actually right behind me, you know, cool hand Luke, yes. you know, uh, one of my that. favorite actors, Paul Newman, uh, and that's where that came from. Okay. Uh, my wife and I argued over every single name, of course, <laughs> that we were going to be naming our kids. And I was, we both agreed, though, we didn't want these conjured sort of, you know, I didn't want to name my kid crazy names like they do in, in Hollywood. I've, I've, yeah. I've seen all, I've, I've, yeah, I've listened to all these people, you know, name some crazy weird names. And I'm just like, can we just keep our kids have simple names? And, um, 
And so, yeah, so that's, that's where that came from. Eventually I was, I, we, she was pregnant with, with Luke. I think we were about eight months in and we were in New York and we were watching uh, Cool Hand Luke. And I said, you know, I love Paul Newman. And she said, I love the name Luke. Boom. And I said, well, that's it. That's kind of what happened with us. And uh, speaking of which, okay, here comes the first name drop, I think. We, we always end up name dropping on this episode. It's usually Nick. Uh, but Josh Holloway, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If this ever comes your way. Um, my lady and I, I was getting her into the TV show Lost. And yeah. we're sitting on the couch watching it. And Sawyer, 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 Sawyer came up. And that's Josh Holloway's character in the in the show. And we both looked at each other and both smiled. And boom, it was Sawyer and decided on the spot right there. I'm thinking Luke could have been possibly Daniel or Lewis too, if I'm looking at your background correctly. Yeah, that's Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, you, you know, it's, some of those are. It's kind of an interesting thing because I've got I've got De Niro up here. Yep. Some signed some signed things, but I was I was at De Niro's gala dinner in New York City. He was receiving an award. I mean, everybody was there. Harvey Keitel, Chris, uh, Christopher Walken. Uh, Orlando Bloom, uh, I mean, you, you, you name it. I mean, there was just, everybody was saying something on his behalf that had worked. Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, anybody who'd worked with De Niro, Sharon Stone. And they were having a silent auction. And I, I left the table at, that we were sitting at. It was put on by the Friars Club in New York City. And I left the table and I said, I'm going to go check on those, those auction items over there and see who's bid on some of this memorabilia. And my wife's like, okay, go have fun. I went over there and I like, nobody had bid on anything. I was like, oh, I might get in this stuff pretty low. So right. I'm going to put all these, <laughs> these bits in. Well, apparently nobody else bid underneath me. And next thing I know, they were like, oh, by the way, you've got a $10,000 bill. Um, <laughs> but uh, regardless, it was, it was fun. And uh, that's where the, those, the, some of these, these came from. I have a, I have a bunch of other things I've been collecting for years, but um I think I put those ones behind me because it reminds me to not be a schmucko because sometimes, you know, you, especially in situations like that, you go like, well, I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool, but there's a rhyme and a reason why they put those silent auctions out there. Mm -hmm. I was, unfortunately I was stuck with the bill, but I, I love every one of these pieces, but you said your son was going to be named Daniel. No, no, no. Or, we or, named him Sawyer after Josh Holloway's character in Lost. Oh, Sawyer. Right. Okay, yeah, that's right. You did say that. Yeah, I, I immediately jumped for that without even pausing into that Luke could have been Daniel or Day or Lewis. Oh, 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 oh yeah, I got it. Sorry, I'm a little slow <laughs> on the pick up there. I'm a little embarrassed <laughs> to tell you how my son got his name. How did he get his name? Oh wait, nine oh nine oh two one zero. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Luke Perry, Dylan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's nothing yeah. wrong with that, man. No, yeah. man. Dude, I watched the hell out of that show. Recent, just the anniversary yeah. of his death, by yeah. the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, he would yeah. have been, oh, man, he would have been an awesome guest. That would have been cool. Oh, he he, he, he was amazing. I, I was lucky enough to meet him. Oh, most cool. of the 902 on a guys back in the day when I was running mm -hmm. around Hollywood. Um, I'm good friends with Stetson Frost, of course. Um, you know, you guys know the Lane Frost brand. Yeah. 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 So, you know, Stetson Frost and, you know, he, he was, all, he's, it's first of all, such a great brand. They sponsor my show as well. And, oh, cool. Um, you should have him on the show. Talk a little bit about that. He's a great dad too. He's got two, yeah. two great kids. Well, you know, um, <clears throat> I know a guy personally right now who has his contact information who can help a guy out with that. So, <laughs> well, just, I'd be more than happy just, to just, just throw that out there. Too. Um, and talk about it. Talk about a success story too. It not only for him, but it's for his entire family. The, you know, uh, Lane's family, played mm -hmm. by the amazing Luke Perry. Um, just hands a, down, one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh, anyway. yeah, it's such a good movie. Such a great. You know what movie. I'm talking about, right, JP? Which Eight movie? seconds? Huh? Eight seconds? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, if, so if, good. If you're a cowboy, I you, you love that flick. <laughs> Even if you're not a cowboy, well, or you not, like cowgirls. I, I mean, okay. <laughs> look, look. Yes, it's a good movie, but it's not. You know, everyone has their their preference and their their. In it, See, that, I'm, that I'm a sucker for romantic mine, comedies but, and like romantic movies. So yeah. you're like you're the sci-fi guy. I like my rom. I'm stuff. the sci-fi sport gritty <laughs> horror. 
guy, and which well, is a cool. good transition. I, I fall I fall right in between both of you then because yeah, I I, I love I love both of those. I love I'm a huge sci-fi. I love sci-fi stuff. I mean, like I can't wait for Dune. Oh, right. Um, mm. And and yeah, I just you know, and of course I love romantic movies, and I and I love like you know cowboy western films and anything that has to do with that. So that's pretty cool. Now, I love me a western too, but the the theme of you know eight seconds bull riding, all that stuff. It it was that's just that previous life of JP, not really my thing. <laughs> but you know, th- th- this is a good segue. One question which will lead into another. Does Luke uh, speak of the devil? I think he just walked by. Yeah, they did just walk by. Yeah. Uh, Does Luke have a sense of who dad is? I mean, how, like, you know, celebrity status you are? And has he ever used that to his advantage? Um, I don't know if he's ever used it to his advantage, but I do know recently, this is before that whole bullying thing started, was kids were asking, hey, what does your parents do? What do do they do? You You know, as kids do. And Luke said, well, my dad's an actor. And they thought that he was lying to get attention. Right. And and he came home and he was like destroyed because these kids gave him a hard time all day that Luke is, uh, you know, he's a liar. He's, he's just wanting attention, this and that. And he, and he came to me heart to heart. He was like, they just think I'm lying. And I said, I said, Luke, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I do. And, you know, if they don't believe you, well, then that's fine. And it's their problem. That's their problem. Um, and then, like, I guess maybe one kid said this something about to a teacher about, like, you know, Luke says his dad's a, an actor. And then one of the teachers in class said, oh, yeah, yeah, Luke's dad's an actor. You know, he's he, I used to watch him on All My Children for many, many years. Right. And, and then and that suddenly some of the kids, I guess, started looking things up online or whatever. And they came back the next day. And most of them were like, that's pretty cool. And then the other, some other kids were like, you know, still put off by it. I think it's a, it's a curse and it's a plague at the same time. It, it, living up to any father's expectations or, or living in your father's footsteps or, or trying to, it's, it's you know, I, I, for me, I grew up in a family that was very disconnected. I, I, my father, when I told him I wanted to be an actor, he was like, well, it's your life. Like as if I was throwing my life away. So I never had that support. So for him, I, I wanted to, him to be, a, it to be a, available that he could be anything he wants to be and not have to be something that is, he could dream as big as he wants to. He can manifest anything he wants to. He can put any dream he wants into an action and feel secure about that under my roof with him, um, no matter who he is as far as a human, you know, what, whatever he becomes. So that's just something in my generation, at least maybe my father's generation, you know, that wasn't a reality. It was, you know, you either, you're, you're, you're hammering something or installing glass or doing carpentry, or you're doing some vocational skill. And that's great. I mean, I have a lot of pride for that. My family's five generations in the glass business, you know, high rises all over Seattle, Washington, but that wasn't for me, but at the same time, that wasn't also my father's vision of me. Yeah. But I want my kids to be able to have their own creative outlets and be able to be their own people that they want to be. And I think that's the big separation, maybe from that 50s, 60s mentality. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man, if I would put myself in your family's shoes and I was a 15 year old Luke and my dad was in TV, you know, I'd be like, dad. You got to bring me something home from the Walking Dead set. You just, <laughs> I need to put that up. I need to show that some bitch off. That's that's what I would do personally. That's that's how I would abuse my my dad's good favor right there. Well, I did I did take the Reaper's necklace. Yeah, I do have that. Yeah, so I do have that. I you know I didn't want to be a thief in the night, but um, the, the, you know it was a, that was a great time on that on that show. By the way, it was a lot of fun and. Had some great conversations with Norman Reedus, of course, Daryl on on The Walking yep. Dead. Um, really great guy. You know, you never know what you're going to expect when you get on these shows. 
especially people that have had that kind of success and you know, that kind of money. But he's been around the industry for a long time. He grew up in New York. And, you know, he'd sit there and he'd roll his like little cigarettes in front of you. And, and he'd be like, hey, let me ask you something. <laughs> and it was always like not that serious of a question, but it was it was something for him to do while he was rolling his cigarettes because they were being rolled every like 10 minutes. Right. Um, but just a stellar man. And really just took the time with anybody that wanted to engage with them and have conversation where is, you know, there's a lot of these sets you'll show up on and work on. And like, you can't talk to this person. You can't look at this person. You're not allowed to do that. It's just because I, I don't know, maybe somebody's fed their ego or said that they, you, you're, you, <laughs> you can't perform at your optimum performance because somebody's talking to you and, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the waiting area, in this, you know, where we're sitting in the, the you know, not a green room because it's not the Walking Dead. We're not sitting in a green room. We're sitting in chairs in the middle of a field. But, you know, but, but you know what I'm still saying. in Georgia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Georgia. That is that is good stuff. And, and spoiler alert, I'll give you a second. I'm sorry about your death, man. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that, that was to be expected. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, uh, we were talking right before you jumped on um, about how I, I, I've i been watching Walking Dead since its inception, and I, I kick myself. I should have waited until it was all done so I can just binge the entire series at once because I've had to watch it over a couple of different times now because, you know, eight years later, you're like, uh, what happened to back then? Okay, we got to rewatch it again. But I'm kind of sad that that's gone over. And Nick, um, quote said, "I don't watch Walking Dead because I am scared." Yeah, I'm not a not. I'm not. I'm like I like some horror movies. I love Scream, but <laughs> I'm not a zombie fan. Well, how do you feel about Scream Five coming out, dude? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm a like, big fan. Just for everything I've read and knowing that they went back to the original, kind of forgetting part four, which is. Thank God they forgot part four a little bit <laughs> and just kind of going back to the original. I'm, I'm stoked on that. I thought it was uh, a reboot. And then I saw the trailer and went, Oh my gosh, then, no, it's just yeah. an aged Sydney and aged everyone else. Uh -huh. I'm in, I'm in. This is, this is my show. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be checking it out. I, I, I want David Arquette on the podcast. So name <laughs> drop. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, I want Norman Reedus as well. But again, and Jeffrey our D. focus Morgan. is the man, Jacob Young, man. Come on. Yeah. We can't keep dropping names. I, was, I, want, about I want Norman on my podcast. Dude, what? Okay, I, now's I, the I time. Reached out to him. I haven't gotten any response yet. Tell me about <laughs> your podcast. What is what is its theme? So my podcast is is real conversations with Jacob Young, and we focus on uh, mental health. Okay. Um, and we focus on you know positive. I love to, of course, highlight all of my artists, the people that have come on my show, actors, authors any entertainers, musicians, but I'd kind of like to get the heart of it without like saying, shoving it down their throats. I just want it to be an easy conversation about, um, you know, Hey, what are some of the things that you've gone through? How have you gotten through that? What do you, what do you anticipate this, this would lead to if you didn't have that opportunity? And um, so you just ask some questions and I get them thinking, uh, my podcast is sponsored by Boys Town. Boys Town has been around since the turn of the century. It was fo is founded by Father Flanagan out of Nebraska, uh, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, Father Flanagan saw these ragtag militia kids during the Great Depression that were robbing, stealing, you, you name it, any crime just to get by because their families had basically said, we can't take care of you. So they were, all these kids were forced out on the street. And so Father Flanagan said, you know what? Don't send these kids to prison. There's no such thing as a bad boy. There's only bad parenting and bad, you know, you know, you know, bad education. That's it. And so he would get on a soapbox and he would talk about that everywhere he went. I mean, he was the original podcaster. In fact, he created his own radio show. He created his own uh, uh, newspaper. And eventually he started integrating boys that were of different ethnic backgrounds, mainly black kids. And Omaha, Nebraska said, whoa, 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 you can't do that. That's not okay. And 
He said, fine. The Jim Crow law was in effect at that time. And so he ended up buying 500 acres just on the outside of Omaha, Nebraska. And he created a town. He created a zip code. He created a postal service. He created a school. He created an education, a platform for young kids to be reformed. And it still exists to this day. They are thriving. He's on the precipice of becoming uh, a saint at the moment. He's already like on level three. I mean, he's been long gone since 1946, but they're about to give him sainthood. Uh, he's changed so many lives. I was lucky enough about a month and a half ago to go to Omaha, Nebraska, and I visited the campus because I've been working with them so closely for the last six years. And I've been talking about Boys Town because I also was in foster care at a, a point in my life. And what I saw hands-on and, and visiting these kids, what they're doing there is, is changing not only their lives, not only giving them opportunities, but they're, they have one of two, two of the only four Tesla CT scans in all of the country. And they have been observing the brain, trauma to the brain from abuse, drug abuse, sexual abuse, all of those things that have been happening to kids for so long that have come through their system. And they were only able to kind of observe a large portion of the brain where they saw damage. Now it's to a pinprick. Like these machines are so amazing. Um, physicists have to come in and crank these things down and level them with the gravity of the earth. And, and they are able now to see the, where the actual trauma begins. And the more interesting thing is the teachings that they teach at Boys Town, which is they teach love. It's, there is a very uh, firm discipline and a, a, a system that they have that they've been using for many years. But what they found is that like incarcerated prisoners, not kids, these kids, but incarcerated prisoners, on the other hand, has been, have been observed their brain you know, functionality and the trauma that's happened to them, they only, they only decrease in prison or, and they only like, they get worse, like even through treatment, their brains, these kids' brains are healing. They actually have evidence of their brains, actually, you know, the, the frontal lobe and, and the trauma that has been placed be, through these CT scans. So they're also on the precipice of a Nobel peace prize. So they, they have they have been um, they have been just changing lives for over a hundred years, and they continue to do that that work. So um, so they sponsor my podcast, and that was congratulations where the whole, on that, by the way. Oh well, thank you. No, that was that was where this this whole thing began for me. Um, I said, you know, I I wanted to do a podcast, but I I I wanted to do something that was making a difference, like what you guys are doing talking about dads and families. I wanted to do something that was important versus something just, you know, you know, some diarrhea mouth talking about whatever this, that, and the other thing. I wanted something to be a little more hyper-focused. And, and so we focus on mental health. We, we talk a little bit about how we overcome those hurdles in life and, and um, those certain things that have, have made the biggest impact in, in uh, the different guests. So that's, that's basically kind of in a nutshell what it's about. Good stuff. That is, you know, yeah. that's what I really appreciate about important podcasts is when there's a message, like you said, diarrhea mouth, you got the two kids in their garage talking about movies and video games. Well, Hey, I'm in, I'm entertained. I'm good. But anybody can do that at any time about anything. And when Nick and I started this whole thing, we, didn't want that. We wanted something that was important, that we felt was important to us and would be important to many other people out there, which still leads me to almost beg at this point, single moms out there doing the role of dad. Where you at? We have yet to have a single female on this podcast. I think they feel it's typecast, dad cast. Well, you know, there's plenty of women out there doing the role of dad as well, and we would we'd, we'd welcome them. So, anyway, that's my little little plug. If anyone out there, <laughs> we're waiting, we're waiting for you. We ain't scared. We'll have you on. How long have you been doing your podcast? 
I'm on today was so Wednesdays it always comes out. So this was my 42nd episode consecutively. All right. So I, I haven't missed haven't missed a single week uh, since I started it. Uh, since since the very beginning, so that's uh, you know pretty cool. I I've, I've been uh, pretty adamant about that. I I was I told I told the sponsors I said you know the one thing about getting a brand out there and and getting people to listen to anything is about being consecutive and making sure that you're consistent about it. So just it has to be every week because they were like well, well maybe we could do it you know once every other week or maybe once a month. I said, nobody's going to take, you know, it as serious if it's not like watching your favorite program right. once a week. Mm-hmm. I you look forward to that podcast or you look forward to that TV show. You want to, you want to know that it's there. That's one thing and, that we do as well. Um, I have a background in radio. I've been working in radio for gosh, 20 years here in Southern Oregon. Um, and then I quit. Well, actually I got fired to be perfectly honest, but it was right before COVID. And I would have gotten canned anyway. So that's neither here nor there. We can talk about that later. But Nick comes to me with his background in concert promoting, et cetera, and said, let's do a podcast with your, you know, your talking and your know-how with all the production value and commercials and, you know, these things, all the actual hardware. Let's start a podcast. And I said, okay, but we got to do it once a week. Nick, you know what? You know what he decides to do? (laughs) About Two, four or three. five weeks into it, he's like, okay, so I got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Uh, we're going to do like three or four this week, and then we're going to do three or four next week, and then three or four next week. And I said, man, you got to pump the brakes. That's, that's a lot of work for JP. It's a lot of work, but uh, we've toned it down, and although um, we're actually doing three this week, which is fine. Yeah, it's kind of ramping back up again. We, uh, yeah. It's the more popular we get, the more people reach out to us, and we're like, "Oh, wow, that's cool." Okay. Yeah. But we, uh, we were about twelve to thirteen episodes ahead of the game. We drop them weekly, and mm-hmm. the only issue I've seen with that is, like, for example, uh, one dropped yesterday, but we recorded it in the middle of the summer, so. It's dropping right now, but it's starting to get cold out. So they're hearing me talk about how hot I am in my studio when they're like, it's almost November, man. I don't get it. So that's our only hiccup, which isn't a horrible (laughs) hiccup to have at all. (laughs) No, not at all. No, I'm the same way. I've been stockpiling interviews now for a while, and it's it, it, it makes it a little bit easier, too, if I can knock out four or five in a week and 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 just you know you know sit back if I needed to because you know with an actor's life specifically man I if if I got to go I'm gone for four weeks or yeah. three weeks and so if I can have as you know many uh, episodes that are in the can it it, it, helps, it helps facilitate that a little bit easier for me. So let's talk about your country music. We didn't even hit on that. Yeah, yet. yeah. So tell us about like touring. If you got anything new coming out. Well, I, I mean, I, I have an entire, I mean, I've got a, a song book that I've been writing for a long time. I haven't recorded anything in a little while. Um, the music that I have recorded in the last few years, I'm very proud of. I, I really, you know, I've loved getting back into music. I started, I, st- I started, let's back way up. I, you know, I started singing because that's always the things like, where did you start, Right. Mm-hmm. I started when I was very young. I, I was in every kind of choir you could imagine. And from men's ensemble, concert choirs to this, that, and that, which led into musical theater, which of course fed into the, the film and TV world as well. But was signed under a record label back in 2001 with Danny Goldberg and Daniel Glass, which are mega guys in the business, like the Eagles and Jeff Buckley and, uh, the Cardigans, 311. I mean, you just, you name it. Those guys were the guys in the business and they collaborated and they created a a, a label that didn't last too, too long. Um, it's Steve Earl when I was there, but was, was not a long lived label. But the, the thing was that they, you know, they signed me, they saw some, some hope. I was pretty young at the time. And I had some songs that I had been writing and working on and, and, and they agreed to sign me to a deal. And so that was where I really sort of fast forwarded right into the music industry. 
I went around the country to almost every radio station across the, the country, every major radio station. I performed a live acoustic performance for the president of Clear Channel's daughter in Dallas, Texas. Oh, wow. I did everything from Rhode Island to Florida, you name it. It's that's when I kind of questioned it. I was like, well, shoot, am I even set up to, I mean, can I do this? I mean, emotionally, can I do this? It's a lot of, it's a lot of work. Those kind of radio tours, especially back then, this was before, obviously before Spotify and mm -hmm. all, you know, any of the streaming platforms that we have today. And you know, I, 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 you know, I stuck with it. I was like, I, you know, actually I'm kind of getting the groove. I'm feeling this thing. And, we had just shot the first music video and it was set to be released on my album was set to be released on September 11, 2001. So on nine 11, it, uh, it actually came out and I shot the music video on nine 10 and the song was called life is good. And it, there was in every warehouse music across the country, they had a life-size cutout of me. It was all, all put in. It was all a deal. And everything was ready to sort of, after that one year of that full radio tour was ready to go into full on touring. Um, but because of what had happened and, you know, you know, God bless everybody that had passed away and every firefighter and every first line defense that, that went into that and the wars that preceded it, you know, it was bigger than, than an, a silly album, right? But, um, but I, but I prayed about that a lot. And I said, you know, maybe there's another and a bigger reason that this happened. And maybe I should just take a step back. Now I never stopped playing and I never stopped writing, but I just stepped back from it. When I moved to New York city, my ambitions were to, to get onto Broadway and perform on Broadway. Um, I, I felt that was always a musical calling for me. And so I auditioned and I auditioned and I auditioned and finally I got onto Beauty and the Beast on Broadway playing Lumiere. Lumiere. Yes. I, I, I did a deep dive on the Wikipedia on you. <laughs> that would be a very deep dive because it's, it's not so, uh, I don't know how, uh, how relevant it is these days, but because uh, Beauty and the Beast is no longer on Broadway, but, um, but it was, it was sort of that getting that sort of recognition that I needed, that it was okay for me to continue with my music career. I was able to sing with a 36 piece orchestra every single night. Uh, Were you six standing months. like this the entire time though? Well, mostly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, man, you know, your hands, they get, the, I'm, they're seven and a half pounds each. But the tough thing about that was not even the weight. It was the fact that these things were designed at the beginning and in the infancy of the show. And they literally are just butane packs with gas lines that run down your arms. So if you accidentally leave the levers on and you put your hands down, you're just leaking gas straight yeah. down. So you have to be really paying attention and making sure that the valves are shut off. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to light yourself on fire. Um, and, and I always had this malfunctioning hand that was always exploding no matter what. So it was, I had to be really, really careful. Like one flame would just go, Oof. and you have to light these things on cue. But regardless, what that did is it reinvigorated me to, to start playing music more again and start writing. And I would write all these songs for my wife. I was always writing because I was, I love my wife. I'm, I'm one of those guys that's a very happily married man. And and I found the, the, the woman of my dreams and, and she's been the best mother to my children than anybody I could ever imagine. So the songs was just kind of poured out. She's finally one day, she says, just stop singing this stuff for me and start singing it for other people too. And that's when I, um, I decided that I was going to start pursuing it again. And um, I reached out to my buddy, Darius Rucker and was talking with him and uh you know there was a couple of friends that you know he introduced me to and we we started i started just writing with some guys some big big guys that were in nashville and we put together a few tunes and and i would just kind of spend time going back and forth for the last you know those last four or five years and put some good songs together songs that haven't been released yet maybe um, but you know, it's, it's a really hard balance too, with acting and music, because 
so many people are naysayers. They'll go, well, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that at the same time. Some of those lines have been broken, but still people are always suspicious about that. So um, all I know is that the stuff that I've worked on and the stuff that I've written is, is honest. It's true. It's from my heart. And um, you haven't seen the last of uh, my music yet. So. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. We actually, we actually have a mutual friend, Billy Lund. Yeah, yeah, Billy. Yeah. Course. So you yeah. play the country against cancer yeah. for him a couple times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy's great, man. I've I've known Billy for a a, a, a long time. Met him while I was up at uh, up at the lake there. We were camping many many moons back, and man, I, I probably ten years ago. Mm-hmm. And and just yeah, I think I was I had a couple too many beers. They were performing. <laughs> And I was, I jumped up on stage with them. I was like, and then <laughs> he looked at me like he was going to kill me. I, was like, I said, let me sing this song. Jacob Young, podcaster, musician, country musician, actor, television star. What's next, man? You going to go to space? You going to call up Elon and be an ex-astronaut? I mean, gosh, right? you're an ambitious well, man and you seem well, to be I, smashing I, those goals. I'll tell you what's next, man. I we just produced our full length feature uh, film. It's just been submitted to South by Southwest. It's been submitted to Sundance. Um, we're going to be submitting it to everything else under the sun. Uh, it's called Four for Fun. It's a uh, it's uh, it's an interesting little script. A very uh, has a sci fi sort of angle to it. But during the pandemic. The problem was is that we couldn't have large crews. Big footprints were were kind of a no no because we, you know there was no regulations yet, and everybody had to be COVID tested, and that costs a lot of money to get everybody tested every day, and sometimes twice in a week. So we came up with a solution to the problem. My producing partner Jason Cook and I we met each other when we were seventeen years old, and he was on Days of Our Lives, and he got the the, the brainiest idea to go ahead and quit the show in the, you know, in the middle while he was on days of our lives and just go back and get his direct, you know, go to directing school and, and get his degree in that. And he was the kind of guy that just walked around everywhere with a camera. And a couple of years ago, he produced a film and wrote and directed it with Peter Bogdanovich and Peter Bogdanovich, of course, Oscar award winning Peter Bogdanovich, uh, Bloom, uh, Paper Moon, you know, many, many other uh, great films. Oh, sorry. He I do the in- same thing. I just, I go everywhere <laughs> with my camera. Oh yeah. I- <laughs> and he, uh, he ended up, he ended up winning a bunch of awards. So he, we were all sitting around for like that year going like, oh man, we got to do something. We got to do something. And we had reconnected recently and, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they, uh, they assume that I'm, I'm a very serious guy and I am pretty serious, but when I, when I let loose, I'm a very, I, I think I'm kind of a funny guy, but, but he really thinks I'm a funny guy. So he okay. wrote a role for me in this movie and it really allowed me to be that person that he saw me as, uh, and that every time I've been pigeonholed in roles over the years, uh, playing that leading man, the nice guy, the, this, the, that, it was something that was very different and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. So we produced this project together and it's in the right hands right now. It's uh, I think we were going to be seeing it fingers crossed being screened on a lot of these major independent film festivals. Nice. So it's already done. You've already, it's, it's, Oh, it's done. We just got to get it out there now. Yeah, that's it. It's done. And we're already we're already working on our next project now. So it's uh, this we're just this one is like we're we're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen for the film festival circuit. Hopefully, we'll be in Sundance this year, and and then South by Southwest, and um, and then we'll make the you know if we just got to get into one. What about That's Cans, it. man? Let's get let's get across the pond. <laughs> yeah, well, he you know he won that too. He won that with his other films. So yeah. we, you know he's he's already got that. I asked him. I said, Jason. What do you think, man? Is this, you know, as far as all the films that you've directed and you've written over the years, where does this one stand? He goes, this is by far the best thing I've ever directed and written in my life and, and produced. So don't, don't producers, not to be the, 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 the negative side here, but don't the producers and directors say that after every film? 
Of course. Yeah, yeah. So, but here we <laughs> are to. after the last one. So, yes, absolutely, it is the best. And man, I look. I hope it gets out here soon. I want to check that that's thing. Good idea, out. man. You gotta, you gotta keep the mirage alive. Because that's when I re-release this particular episode and say, "You remember that guy you saw on the movie? <laughs> Jake? You, you, can't, you can't watch this episode, man." Nick. Yeah. All right. So, man, we're getting close to the end of our time here. We've got a little segment we like to do. Jacob's called the Five for Five. Or yeah. the, the fast five, basically five, five for, I don't, I'm, I'm thinking food. I, I'm on a fast. I'm doing a fast right now. I'm so proud of you. I'm, I'm like 48 <laughs> hours in and I'm very hungry. So when I just said five for five, I was thinking like burgers. I right, apologize. <laughs> the fast five. It's a series of five random questions that Nick likes to ask and uh, they're fun. Here we go. All right. What's a go-to meal you cook for your kids? Go-to meal that I cook for my kids would be. Oh gosh. Um, I, I typically, you know, because I have to, I've got a girl that doesn't need any meat anymore. So I have to always like kind of think outside the box. So I, I typically will just do something that's pretty simple, basic. Um, I will do a little, uh, vegetable stir fry, mm. um, and that makes them pretty all happy. Nice. All right. Do you prefer acting or singing? Oh gosh. I mean, <laughs> my meditation is singing, so I guess I'd have to go with singing. Okay. I think singing, yeah, singing, singing while acting. On it. Sorry. Singing while acting. <laughs> there you go. Yep. You could have a billboard with anything on it. What would it be and why? <clears throat> oh, gosh. That's a tough one. A billboard with anything on it and why? Um, I, I guess my family, man, you know, and, and letting everybody know how much I love them. Awesome. I like that. A funniest dad feel for you. <laughs> love this one. <laughs> 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 we've all done it <laughs> we've all had some dad fails oh bad what is it so repeat the funniest again? dad fail oh dad fail oh my gosh <laughs> oh gosh i you know i i i mean i guess probably i don't know i, I mean there's there's been so many <laughs> um i don't i don't know i mean i think maybe you know it would um, maybe, I don't know. I mean, there's just so many, like maybe coaching baseball and, 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 you know, I, I don't know. I mean, when you, when you say dad fail, like what do you, like what spectrum are you talking about? Typically we get changing diapers and forgetting to be safe when you're changing diapers and get shit on all over the place. Oh, well, first cuss word. Well, well done, Nick. You made it 58 I, minutes. I know. I tried well, today. Well, 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 that well, that that does happen. That did happen, yes. and um, yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I've always been pretty good. I. What about dad successors? Okay. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> that's yeah. Dad successor. <laughs> Here's a funny story. My wife was learning to breastfeed, right? And you know, this this is maybe comes from growing up in Tillamook, Oregon, and and working on a big dairy farm. But you know, the, you know, the the lactation uh, nurse, she, she could not get my wife. It would not work. Nothing would work. And finally, I was like, No, no, you got to do it like this. And I did it, and like milk went everywhere. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and so my wife's like, oh, that's how you do it. And then like next thing you know, like when we were on the go, like you're running down the road, and like the my baby needed a bottle, she knew how to do it herself <laughs> without a pump. So that that was a pretty dad success for me. Well done. All right, Nick. All right. More. I don't have any more today. I only okay. have four. I got one. I got. I got. Okay. I got one. Uh, favorite '80s movie. Favorite 80s movie. Um, how about, uh, gosh, man, there's so many good ones. We were just, we, my, my son's so obsessed now with the 80s. It's so cool. Um, gosh, what am I thinking of? Uh, Rob Lowe. Um, Speaking of Rob which, you've you got, you got a strong resemblance to Rob Lowe, depending on the lighting and the angle. I don't know if you've heard that I, before. But. I have heard that before, actually, and I still don't see it. But I guess, you know, because I'm, I'm, I guess, lighter, fairer skin. But uh, what is the one I'm thinking of? Rob Lowe, Ralph Macchio. Um, oh, oh, oh. Oh, my gosh. What is wrong with us? <laughs> it's the age, man. <laughs> man. Um, oh, boy. Oh, the the Outsiders? Outsiders. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Favorite 80s movie by far. 
Okay. Mine's Big Trouble in Little China. I, That's a good one, too. <laughs> Russell, man. You tell them the check is in the mail. Okay. <laughs> you can perform as your country musician self with any artist, living or dead, or band. Who is it? Well, Cody Jinks, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I see I'm, that I'm right the, there, yeah. Or in the hat right now. I've become good friends with Cody and I just was at a show here in South Carolina. So this is actually a reality for you. You could, it, it it's most likely yeah, can happen. Is. You should I make don't know a reach. If it's going to happen, but I can tell you, I wrote, well, I, I produced a film last year, a short film called prepare for launch. And Cody wrote a song for it that nobody's heard yet. It's fantastic. It's, and what he told me, he was like, look, dude, I'm a, I'm a space head, man. I've always loved space. I love sci-fi. And this is about a, an Apollo, the Apollo race in the 1960s. And it's a true story. And I'm playing, the. Um, it's a biopic. And he just slayed it. And the fact, and here's the thing, again, I was, I was kind of talking about manifesting things in your lives. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know. Cody personally, I'd been listening to his music for about three or four years, like at nauseum, just driving everywhere I'd go, driving my wife crazy. She's like, do you listen to anything else? I'm like, no, this is the guy, man. This is it. And I, you know, I, I reached out to him and asked him to come on the podcast and just at a, at a, a wing and a prayer. And they got back to me. He got back to me and he said, yeah, man, I'll do it. So, so that was a pretty, pretty special. And since then we've had a really cool relationship and I was just there backstage with him and Ward and, and, you know, just what a, what a really awesome time uh, and what an amazing artist. So if I was able to be able to perform or even perform one of his songs, that would be fantastic. I suppose that's the answer to who's been your favorite guest on your podcast as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the answer. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Jacob Young, Emmy Award winning podcaster, musician, TV actor, uh, soon to be going to space, amazing father guy, done it all. Jacob, thank you so much for your time, man. You've been an absolute pleasure to have on. Um, I'd like to plant a seed before I let you go. Nick, you know what's coming here. Right. We do a Father's Day episode. Uh, we've done one in the can because we're right about with you at about 50 episodes of this podcast. We plan on doing next year, obviously not on Father's Day. We don't want to take that day away from you, but you know, a week or two prior where we're going to have about 80 squares, uh, if all goes right, on this Zoom with past guests of DadCast where we just wish each other Happy Father's Day and all the fathers out there, Happy Father's Day. We would love, obviously, if your schedule allows it, to have you on that episode as well. And I'm thinking next May. Hey, man, count me in. Yeah, buddy. Love that. Nick, you got anything? Oh, man, I'm good. All right. I got to go pick up baby, so. Yeah, and my, like <laughs> I said, my kids should be walking off that bus in the, into the studio here. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Any moment. Once again, Jacob Young, thank you so much. Everyone else out there listening, if you're watching on YouTube, please obviously like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. Uh, we thank you for your support. Jacob, you've been amazing. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and we look forward to talking to you again in the very near future. Hey, yeah, Nick, thanks, Jeff, thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you, yeah. man. And all hey, of you, I do want to get see you. On. Oh, sorry, Nick. Oh, sorry. I thought we were all done. My bad. Oh, no. We will <laughs> we'll see. Wait till we're done. <laughs> it's that Zoom pause thing, man. Gosh. Oh, no, like, uh. <laughs> we will see all of you next week, next episode. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.